At Magellan Learning Solutions, our mission is to help our clients' educational missions with tailored curricular and operational solutions to help them thrive. To meet the accompanying challenges, the experts at Magellan Learning Solutions offer a full spectrum of services in the areas of curriculum development, operational administration, training and professional development, enrollment and marketing, or custom solutions to niche projects. Whether managing turnkey projects, consulting, or acting as a force multiplier, our experience and relational approach will help your team attain its goals. For all your educational needs, Think Magellan. Visit us at thinkmagellan.com today and set up an introductory meeting. Welcome to the Magellan Podcast, navigating education in the 21st century. This podcast brings the expertise of Magellan Learning Solutions to the biggest questions and issues in higher education. It is produced and directed by Adam Rank. The podcast theme is written and recorded by Wayne Patton, and it features Magellan partners Wayne Patton, Aaron Traphagen, and Emily Hetty. For this special episode on the Magellan Podcast, we wanted to introduce you to one of our clients, Reverend Dr. Deborah Lynn Hagens. We've been privileged to support Reverend Dr. Hagens' project, The Dark Collective, which is an exciting, innovative collection of six online courses called Pathways that are designed to help Christians, pastors, and church leaders strengthen their ministries and impact their community and culture. Join our conversation. Hey, thank you, Adam, for that great introduction. Uh, As usual, my name is uh, Aaron Traphagen uh, here at Magellan Learning Solutions, and I'm joined by my partners, Drs. Emily Hetty and Dr. Wayne Patton. How are you all doing today? Doing wonderful, well. wonderful. We've been in very good company all day. So. Wow. All right. Well, and as you may have heard in the introduction, we've got a special guest with us today, Reverend Dr. Deborah Lynn Hagens from uh, Hampton University here in Virginia and the Hampton University's Ministers Conference. Uh, welcome, Deborah. Hello, and thank you so much. So happy to be with you. I've been in good company all day today, so well, mutual. We made her say that. That is, uh, no. <laughs> No, it's, uh, it's been a good day talking about lots of great things, and I, I think this is a, a good way to really wrap up, and we just want to take an opportunity to kind of share with our listeners a little bit about uh, Deborah, the project she's been doing, and our time together over the last several years. Um, so maybe a, a good place to start, Deborah, would just be maybe filling folks in a little bit on your background, training, ministry, a little bit of your vision, and uh, where you've been. Sure. I am a career educator. I started out in early childhood education, loved kindergarten, loved first grade. Um, I did that for about 14, 15 years and then was called into the ministry. And uh, I was interim pastor at Queen Street Baptist Church in Norfolk, Virginia. And from there, I became chaplain of Hampton University in 2008. And that's where I've been ever since. Um, have enjoyed uh, the educational part of what I do, the spiritual part of what I do, but most of all, I enjoy the interaction with the students. Our chapel on Sunday mornings at 11 o'clock when I was hired, I told them I didn't really understand chapel, but I could give them a great modified church model. And so that's (laughs) what we've been doing for the last 14 years. But it's a very, um, very multifaceted position, which I enjoy very much. The chaplaincy at Hampton is very unique and very different, and I'm privileged to be in that position. All right. Well, thanks for that background. Uh, we, we came together actually working on some projects that were related to uh, some Lilly Foundation uh, grants. Yes. Uh, and you've been working with those folks for a while. Um, maybe you could share with us a little bit about Lilly, how you came to, to be involved with Lilly and, and got started there. Sure. Uh, Lilly is a wonderful foundation. The Lilly Endowment Incorporated is its actual name. And it is an organization which deals with the religious, educational, and other charitable foundations and organizations. Um, Lilly's goal is to encourage the human spirit. They're very much about the human spirit and very much uh, a supporter of Christian ministry. Uh, I'd attended a workshop, a conference at Lilly involving youth. And at that, there was an announcement made about a thriving in ministry um, grant opportunity. And so I said, that sounds like something I'd like to be involved with. And so I uh, applied and received our first Lilly grant, uh, Thriving in Ministry, which is about pastoral health, uh, pastoral vitality. 
Um, in the meantime, I was introduced to this wonderful Magellan team by <laughs> Mr. Curtis Ross. And um, we met, and the project at the time, we did not get go through with that project, mm-hmm. but uh, the Lord provided another opportunity for us to work together with uh, the Lilly projects we've been doing. And so actually, we've been working together for the last uh, three and a half to four years on uh, thriving congregations, and that is to protect the health and uh, vitality of congregations, and to help individuals to grow their relationship with God, um, to make sure that people understand that it's more than just church, it's more than just coming together, but it's about your individual relationship with Christ and what he means uh, to you and your family. So that's how we came together, and that's we've been working on that for the last four years. Yeah, I'd forgotten that we had tried to do an initial project. Mm-hmm. We'd come down to visit you at mm-hmm. Hampton, and uh, that didn't work out. Yes. And it was it was a, a decent span, maybe another year, year and a half a before half. this initiative yeah, about a year and a half. Mm-hmm. came together. So one thing we appreciate about you, Deborah, is that you're very, you know, people like to say they're visionary leaders. Well, you're too humble to say that. But <laughs> I think one thing we all think about with you is you have a very visionary um, leader in that Thank you me. saw a problem. And in, in the church and in church health and in congregational health, and you saw this opportunity through Lily to, to, to write up a, a great way to kind of triage that. So sure. we'd, uh, we'd love to hear about how that specific mission and vision came about. How did you dream sure. that and ponder it and make it happen? Well, I, I'll have to go all the way back to my childhood. I was... Uh I grew up in a very small town in Georgia, and at the time, our church was a large church for the area, but what we did was we always took care of the pastor. No matter what happened, uh, there were families would have a month, and we'd actually take care of the pastor and his or her family. Uh, That field nowadays uh, has kind of expanded and gone into a different direction, and so I work with pastors constantly, year after year. One of the things I hear them talk about uh, officially, unofficially, on the record, off the record, is this idea of burnout and how much they carry, how much pastors carry. And so for me, this opportunity to work with pastors and help them to um, understand that you can take time away. You can take time for yourself. And this opportunity to bring pastors together in a retreat-like setting whereby they don't have to worry about anything, just three and a half days of being revitalized with various workshops and seminars, coming together with pastors with, with like issues, like successes, like celebrations, just helping them to understand that they're not in it alone and helping them to understand that there are people here on all uh, at all points of the pastoral career arc that can help you, pastors with no experience, Pastors with a lot of experience, pastors who are about to retire, pastors who's, who are burnout, pastors who are uh, nearing the point of burnout. But the goal is to put us all in a room and then several small rooms and get us all talking about what's going on in our ministries in a safe, a safe space. Well, that's great. Um, so, so this minister's conference that you're talking about, the safe space, um, can you just Tell us a little bit about that. Um, I personally wasn't familiar with it until I got to know you, but it's, it's a very impressive entity. Oh, my goodness. The Minister's Conference is 109 years old this year. Mm. 1914 is when it was founded with four denominations and 40 pastors. Uh, I think when it began, registration was 25 cents, I believe, and you could stay in the dorm, I believe, for about a dime or so. And so the meals were on campus. But what it was, it was an opportunity for pastors who did not have access to a seminary education to come together and receive formal training. It was also an opportunity to know that uh, you were not alone in what you were doing. And so basically from 40 to sometimes as many as 10,000 members in previous years, uh, individuals have gathered on the campus of Hampton University the first full week of June each year for uh, dynamic preaching, for dynamic lectures, for workshops, seminars. The Choir Guild is awesome. There's a music component to the conference as well. It's five days of rest and retreat. Hampton University is on a waterfront. And so in the mornings at 6 a.m., you'll see people out walking on the waterfront and meditating. You'll see people just walking the campus. There are those who love to stay in the dorm because they get that college experience Mm -hmm. again of being in the dorm. So it's, it's just an opportunity for pastors to step back and to just step back from all of the work, from the call, and really just 
be renewed and be revitalized in that great call to ministry. And so that's a great part of my work, along with directing the religious studies program on campus. It's a bachelor's program right now. We do offer a Master of Divinity and a Master of Arts in Theological Studies. And so basically, besides the chaplaincy and um, the work of the pastorate at the Memorial Church, it is a full, full, full full-time job. (laughs) It is a full-time job, but a wonderful call, a very unique call. And I'm uh, pleased to... um, have accepted the call. Deborah, one of the things I've, I've only gotten to know you over the last year or so, um, but one of the things I've really appreciated is how, how forward thinking you always are. Um, and the project we've been working on with you, the, the DART Collective, which I'll ask you to talk about in just a second, um, is very forward thinking, um, not just about pastoral health, but more broadly about congregational health. Um, and it doesn't require everyone to come to the campus of Hampton to participate. It's, it's, um, post-COVID especially important that there be more than one way for people yes. to participate in these initiatives. So yes. could, could you tell us a little bit about what, what this Lilly-supported DART collective is? Yes. Mm-hmm. The first proposal I wrote was one on thriving in ministry. That had to do directly with pastoral health, pastoral well-being, pastoral vitality. The second proposal is, for me, like the, the other bookend mm-hmm. to it, it's thriving congregations. So we're talking about thriving in ministry and thriving congregations. And while thriving in ministry uh, deals with pastoral health, thriving congregations deals with uh, congregational vitality. It deals with the fact that congregations in some areas may be dying Uh, on hiatus, however you want to say that, particularly after COVID. But this particular effort really helps pastors to do what I call fall in love with the congregation again. Discover who's in your congregation. Discover um, who's in your community and invite those people into the congregation and leave the sanctuary and go out into the community and welcome people into the congregation. So this is all about not the pastorate, not the church, but this is about the people, about families. And so basically I think that the church is the congregation. The church is the people. And so basically once you embrace the people again and let them know that you are still here to provide hope, to provide encouragement, to provide all of those things that our Bible tells us that we can find in the fellowship with with each other, I think once we do that, we'll be able to um, bring individuals back into the sanctuary. One of the things that the Dart Collective scientifically has chosen to do is look at something called congregational studies, and that's really uh, training people to take a look at your congregation and see what where do I need to start? And so with the Dart Collective, we began with this whole idea of theology. What does God say about congregations? What does God say about gathering? What does God say about gathering people together and loving people and coming together with people and being the church, not just having church, but actually being the church. We go from there. We go to several. There are six of those modules. I won't go through all of them, but on programming, on um, administration, on curating activities, on Christian education, many things in those uh, six modules you will find to help to build a vital congregation. And so that was the key. The other thing that was key to thriving congregations is to make sure that everyone did not have to come to the campus in order to get this training, that this training could be year-round, that you could buy these, um, purchase rather these uh, materials, these resources, take them back to your congregation and begin to literally um, immerse your congregation in the six modules, in these six leadership modules. Yeah, and it's very practical too. I mean, the, the outcome is really to create a plan, right, mm-hmm. that if they go through the curriculum mm-hmm. Um, that we work with Deborah to design, that there would be an action plan that came mm-hmm. out of it. Exactly. It wasn't just knowledge for knowledge's sake. Exactly. It's let's practically and empirically do something. Well, and to that end, it's not all these people sitting alone doing this course. Yeah. Uh, it was really specifically designed uh, with four weekly you know, units yes. within each module. Mm-hmm. So people kind of remotely work through the content for a given week. And then you are very intentional about making sure each week, then there's a point where that group of people comes together, right? And they do a lab time together where they work through what they've read and kind of put that into action 
now, okay, we've talked about what it looks like to look at the mission this week. So now let's look at our mission and talk yes. about it and work through that together you know, here at the church. Most definitely, and that's done in something called a CECL lab, Congregational Studies Innovation Lab, and that's where a church designates a room, small room with a table, lots of wall space, post-it notes, all those things, and you just talk about what does this mean to our congregation at this time? Um, Do we know what God says about congregations? What does our Christian education program look like? Have we looked at our vision and mission statement recently? Have we looked at the objectives? Are we serving the needs of the community? Are we serving the needs of the congregation? So this Cecil Lab is a think tank. It's a small think tank uh, for individuals to come together and talk about their individual context and their individual churches. I I love DART, of course. I love it because it's customizable. Uh, No two churches will put DART in, in place in the same way because churches are different, congregations are different, communities are different. And so it's a, it's not a generic program, but it's a well planned program so that I can take it back to my context, you can take it back to your context, and apply it to the needs of your church and your congregation. I I love that about the Dart Collective. And I uh, have Magellan to thank for bringing that into fruition and making sure that it's generic enough but specific enough to meet the needs of a large congregation, a small congregation. And then if you're um, planting a church, to begin with DART, to see how we can put these pieces in place as we begin to grow a new church that is planted. So it's good for established churches, and it's good for newly planted churches as well. Deborah, you made one point, or actually two points, um, when we were talking ahead of time that I loved. Um, One is, and I think you sort of um, led up to it a little bit here, there's there's a lot of churches out there that probably haven't looked at their mission statement for for a long, long, long time. <laughs> um, or if they have, they haven't really taken time to say, what does this mean right now for our community mm-hmm. in our context? Mm-hmm. And um, the other point you made that I think is a really, really important one is that focusing on the mission like that gives churches both a sense of direction and the ability to say no to things that they don't really need to be doing. Mm-hmm. Um, there's been a tremendous amount of change over the last number of years, as we know, and it's it's a lot of church programs that were working are not working. Mm-hmm. Um, there's a need to do some new things, but with what bandwidth? So I love I love how practical this is. And um, mm-hmm. I know speaking as um, part of a learning design team, um, we got very excited about the focus on mission, yes. um, the focus on kind of the real world applications of mm-hmm. this, because good education is good education, yes. whether it's happening in a university or in a church out in Kansas. Mm-hmm. Um, education works the same way. Yes, it does. And that's the one strength of of Magellan Learning Solutions, that's the great strength among others that they brought to the table with DART, the education piece. I think that a program without a strong educational base really just kind of floats away after a while. There's nothing to to ground it. And so basically with the DART Collective being very educationally sound, um, you have something to hold on to. You have concepts and principles and information and knowledge to hold on to. Um, The online piece is very, very important to DART. There is a set of books that are custom made for each of the modules, but also this online piece whereby you get to sit and really reflect upon what you're learning. You read, you write, you read, you write, you reflect upon what you're learning, and then you share that with others in your church. And so this idea of not having to go specifically to a class, you can use things like Teams and Zoom in order to come together because we know schedules are busy. And so this whole idea of technology infused into the dark collection is really essential and really important, particularly in this day and time. So while we have the e-books, we also have the online classes. For those of you like me who love to turn the page, one page after the other, I still buy books. I still buy hardcover books or paperback books. So for those people, we have the books in that form as well. I think it was a very exciting project to work on. Uh, I know the folks on our uh, learning design team really enjoyed it. Lindsay, specifically, I know spent a lot of time working with you and Adam. So I think a lot of people would be excited to learn more about the Dart Collective and maybe what would this look like, you know, to bring into their own congregation and and to be able to explore this and examine it. Uh, How can people get involved with this or, or find information about the Dart Collective? There's a wonderful website Um, If you just key in the DART Collective, 
you will be led directly to the website with its many parts to give you its mission, what it's all about. You get to take a look at um, the founder. You get to take a look at the contributors. You get to take a look at our partners. Uh, you'll find out it's uh, lots of information about the Dart Collective. Uh, you'll also get to see where you can access those materials, where you can get them for your congregation. Um, and I think folks will will really enjoy that. Yes. Um, you know, and just know that people individually can go through this program and and pretty much get into it right away. But you know, we also encourage groups within the church. You know, who can yes. can take action and explore that stuff together and. You know, there's an opportunity to look at, at both of those options uh, on the website. Um, I wanted to say that uh, each module is about is four weeks long. Mm-hmm. And so if pastors, congregations are looking for a great uh, congregational Bible study, it's a six-month Bible study because it covers so much. Uh, the seven churches, it covers this whole idea, as we said, of theology. And you just get a good idea of what it means to be a vital congregation. So it's a great Bible study even to take the entire church through if you're looking for a great Bible study. And Deborah, I think we talked another on another side about um, possibly it's a good thing for maybe a church board to do. Yes. Mm -hmm. Um, If a church is in one of those change seasons or direction seeking seasons, I know I've been on a church board and Mm -hmm. we didn't get a whole lot of training. Um, We, we worked, we did a lot of work, but um, there was not a whole lot of structure always. So would have helped us. Yes. Even to train associate ministers, associate mm-hmm. pastors, your executive pastor can be put the person, the lead person on it and bring mm-hmm. your associate ministers in. And then those individuals can go out and train the uh, ministry leaders. So it's almost like a training of trainers program. Uh, if you could take a look at it like that, uh, that's one of the ways that it can be used. Or like Aaron said, it can be your individual study, you know, your individual study. So it's a number of ways that the Dark Collective can be customized to fit your um, your church needs. One of the things I think really foundationally, just my last thought on the curriculum itself, but I really like the idea. It wasn't that you just had everybody jump into examining, uh, you know, the, the vision and mission and all these things. Uh, I like that you really started everybody off with kind of a foundational review of theological principles, yes. right? Because there's, there's a lot of folks who maybe were trained or have gotten into the ministry um, you know, have that background. It's a good refresher to look at that. But there's a lot of folks maybe who are part of helping run the church who don't have any of that formal training and really getting an opportunity to kind of look at theology from that perspective and have that basis before they jump into the work of the program, I think was was a really good design element for yourself. Yes, without having to take a college class. Mm-hmm. The books and the curriculum, they are both designed for lay leaders People with degrees, people without degrees. Uh, it's not a dumbed down curriculum. Uh, you will find that it's a full a full curriculum, and mm-hmm. that in our beta testing, we had individuals on all ends of the spectrum. No one complained. No one said this is too easy. No one said this is too complicated or um, too involved. It was just where everybody could meet it and 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 are able to talk uh, on an even plane. Sometimes you have uh, books where the language is so lofty, or conversations where the language is so lofty that everybody gets lost. But that was an intentional thing on our part to make sure that it's understandable across the age range and across educational levels. Well, that's a big deal. And uh, again, we we really appreciate everything that the Dark Collective uh, has been and how it's grown, um, you know, in its structure over the past few years. But uh, we know we have a lot of, you know, things coming from uh, Dr. Hagen. So uh, we'd love to hear a little bit about what what's next. What's the next big thing for you? What, where is your focus right now? Yes. Well, right now I am excited about our minister's conference for 2023. Uh, COVID hit and we have not had a full conference since 2019. So this will be the first time we have gathered in full session uh, since 2019 and we're excited about the full five-day conference. We're excited about uh, our speakers. We're just excited to bring the world, the country, as it were, to Hampton University and give pastors that time of rest and relaxation and rejuvenation and knowledge that they look so much forward to uh, each year. And so we're looking very much forward to the workshops and seminars. We're looking forward to the choir guild and how they bless us each year. Looking forward to the 
family-like atmosphere. Uh, some people uh, say that it's like a big family reunion because there are people who've been coming for decades and they come to uh, not just meet and greet each other, but to really encourage one another and to just to share and to be around like-minded people. So we're very much looking forward to that. The conference is June 4th through the 8th, the first full week of June always is conference on the campus of Hampton University. Our website is open. I'll just key in Hampton University Ministers Conference 2023, and you will find all of the information there. A registration is $325, and we'd love to have you. We're, we're uh, just anticipating uh, great numbers this year, so we'd love to have you if you can find it in your time to visit us. Thank you. Very good. I think people are ready to get back out, right? I think yes. there's COVID still with us, but yes. there's a sense that you can you can go with safety to these places and yes. and and recommune with your peers and friends. So we're excited for you to have a, a good crowd there this year and yes. and get back on the full docket in person. Oh yes, oh yes. We're looking forward to that. We're looking forward to unveiling uh, completely the Dark Collective this year. Mm-hmm. There are some other initiatives that we're involved in that you'll be, uh, Lily initiatives we're involved in that you'll be able to get more information about those as well at the conference. But we're really excited about having dark materials on hand, uh, having a workshop that talks about um, the dark collective, and just really looking forward to sharing this beautiful gift with, uh, with the world of pastors and congregations. Well, it is an, uh, an impressive conference. I mean, you know, talking about, you know, thousands of folks mm-hmm. uh, all with the same kind of mission and purpose coming together. And firsthand, having been on the campus, it is, uh, you know, as you were talking about, there's people going out in the mornings. And Wayne and I, several trips up there, it is one of those impressive things just to see kind of the sun coming up mm-hmm. over the uh, the river and, and the bay. Yes. Um, it, it's a beautiful place and, and an historic campus. It's yes. it's a wonderful place. And so I I really think it'll be a great time for folks up there. Yes, we we go out of our way to make sure that our guests, our pastors and our psalmists and our singers and musicians, that they really have absolutely nothing to do but come and enjoy the campus, come and enjoy the food, come and enjoy the program that is uh, designed for them. This year's theme is concerning transforming tools for congregations and communities and cultures. This is where DART really fits in as well because it is a tool to help transform churches and congregations and communities and cultures. So we're looking forward to that this year, and hopefully you will find some um, knowledge and some information and some resources there that will help uh, you to do just that. I have no doubt after several years of work, I've seen what you uh, you come together and bring to fruition when you get to work on something and, and the materials and uh, relationship have been, you know, very encouraging for us. And we're very excited about what we've done with you, Deborah, and, and what's to come down the road. So, yes, I, I just have to say before we close that the relationship that I've um, we've nurtured over the years has been one that's been one of teamwork, one of mutual respect, uh, very much uh, a relationship of idea generation. Uh, it, there's been laughter. There's been fun. Uh, there's been creativity. The whole team has really just put its arms around this project, around the Hampton University project, uh, the Dark Collective, and really has done a stellar job in making sure that this program rivals any other program that's out there. Thank you and kudos and God bless you and I appreciate you and I look forward to working with you in the years to come on other projects as well. We're thanks excited so too. Thank you. Yeah. And thanks for being here uh, and thanks for joining us as well uh, for another episode of the Magellan Podcast. Thank you for listening to our conversation with Reverend Dr. Deborah Lynn Hagens. To learn more about the Dark Collective or the Hampton University Ministers Conference, look for the links in our show notes. If you enjoyed the podcast today or found it helpful, follow us on iTunes, on Spotify, or where you listen to podcasts and listen to our other episodes. Leave a review. Let us know what you think. If you or your school is looking for help with RSI, your online ecosystem, curriculum, or course development, think Magellan. Our team would love to help reach out to us at thinkmagellan.com. Thank you for joining us on the Magellan Podcast, Navigating Education in the 21st Century.